And so we were looking at what were called initiation factors, and we discovered the link between leucine and an initiation factor called EIF4. That is sort of the downstream effect of mTOR. mTOR is a regulator, and it stimulates EIF4 and S6 and other initiation factors. And so what we found was that when you came out of an exhaustive exercise, muscle is catabolic until you took in enough leucine to reverse it. The biggest effect of feeding right afterwards is about a two-hour window, but that's in untrained individuals. The more trained you get, the less you're going to see a post-exercise effect. So if you're beginning training, you're in the first four weeks, post-exercise protein probably makes sense. Mm. If you're well-trained, you're basically training the same way and you've been doing it for six months, I don't see any effect difference between having protein within two hours after exercise versus just having your three or four meals per day. You won't see any difference in either mass or strength. Take that last statement, metabolizable energy, and you'll hear trainers say, well, you can't use more than 30 grams at a meal. You won't digest it or whatever. That's not true. I mean, you'll digest and absorb 100 grams of protein at a meal, but muscle in particular only has a window of around 20, 25 to 60, depending on protein quality, where it can use it. The liver will use all of it. Mm -hmm. When you eat a meal of protein, approximately 50% of the protein is, 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 is degraded to nitrogen and carbon before it ever gets to the blood. The one exception, the exception to that are the branched chain amino acids, leucine, isoleucine, valine. Over almost 75, 80% of those get into the blood, and we're back to that teleological argument. Why did muscle learn to sense that? Because that basically shows up in the blood in direct proportion to the meal, and the muscle learned to sense that as a meal quality. It says, oh wow, this meal has adequate quality for me to, to trigger this very expensive process of protein synthesis, protein turnover, and until it sees that signal, it won't do it. And so leucine is one of really two amino acids that are ketogenic. It is metabolized as a fatty acid. And what we know is that leucine will also activate the CPT1 enzyme, the carnitine palmitin transferase enzyme, which is the link of bringing fatty acids into the mitochondria for oxidation. When you have higher leucine, it also begins to inhibit pyruvate from going into, into the mitochondria. So when you oxidize a leucine, the nitrogen that comes off of it is put onto pyruvate, generating an alanine, and so the body begins to recycle glucose. So it becomes kind of steady state on glucose and emphasizes fat oxidation. Under conditions where you'd be burning fat like you just described, leucine actually stimulates fat oxidation and spares glucose for the brain and other tissues. Annotated and summarized. Easy to share with loved ones. The description below the title for this video has these summary points.